So I'm popping on here because I want to document some of my sourdough journey because I am struggling to get my sourdough right. So I thought, let's bring you along with me and see if we can get it right together. I've got my sourdough starter here sitting out in the sun. Let me show you. Here it is. I've got it in the sun because it really thrives in a warm environment. Um, and I can see some bubbles, which is a good sign. But it hasn't really rid risen much past that elastic band, which is concerning. I I read online that if you feed your sourdough starter with rye flour, that it can really help your sourdough starter thrive and come back to life. But I couldn't find rye flour at the shops. I could only find wholemeal spelt flour. So I looked it up and it said that that could also be beneficial for your starter. So I just fed my starter again with the spelt flour. I also fed it this morning with wholemeal flour. So I'm really hoping that it's gonna be ready to use this afternoon so that we can make some bread dough. So it's been about two hours, maybe more, since I added the flour, so since I fed my starter, but sadly it does not look like it's risen. I'll show you. Not risen, but it does look more foamy and bubbly. And it does kind of look bubbly without, so maybe it's ready to use, I'm not sure. I just don't know. I think we give it a go. I think we try to make a loaf of bread. So I'm now in the kitchen and I'm going to attempt to make a sourdough. So let's see how we go. I made two loaves last week that were a failure, but I've really been focusing on strengthening my starter. So let's see how we go this time. I love to use my KitchenAid for this process. I'm using a recipe from Farmhouse on Boone that requires 100 grams of starter, 325 grams of water, and 475 grams of flour. I'm just using some baker's flour. And I've read a bunch of recipes that say to add the salt after like half an hour, like while you will allow the flour and the sourdough starter and the water to like all mesh together. So I think I'm gonna do that and add the salt in about half an hour. So it's been about an hour, an hour 15, and I'm going to do a stretch and fold. So I'll show you how to do that. So you just pull a section up like that and fold it over. Pull a section up and fold it over. And this is to develop the gluten strands. Pull it up, and stretch it over. And we're probably going to do this maybe two more times before we let it uh, bulk ferment. So a few hours later my sourdough had not yet bulk fermented so I left it overnight and when I woke up it was perfect and ready for shaping. You'll notice that the quality of these next few clips are not as good as the first and also I'm not speaking to the camera and that's because I accidentally filmed it in slow-mo so I'm so sorry about that hence the voiceover. Basically what I was trying to do was keep the air bubbles in my dough while building tension and also sealing up any of those cracks. So I do that and then I place it in my banneton and cover it with some cling film, put it in the fridge to cold ferment for about two to three hours. I think one of my big mistakes last week with my sourdough was that I did not cold ferment which meant that when I poured it out of the banneton, it just completely spread out and I couldn't score it. So putting it in the fridge is really important to help it stay together. I dusted off some of that flour and just kind of evenly distributed the flour amongst the dough. And then I got a little blade and I cut a slit 
right down the side of my sourdough loaf and I made sure that it was a little bit deep, about half an inch to an inch deep. I preheated my cast iron pan in as hot as my oven could go and then I put my sourdough in as well as some ice to create some steam and put it back in the oven. After 20 minutes, I took the lid off and then I left it in there for another 20 minutes to just become nice and golden. And at this stage, I was stoked at how my sourdough loaf had turned out. It was fluffy, it was light, it was crunchy on the outside, chewy in the middle. I couldn't really have asked for more other than perhaps some more air bubbles throughout my dough, which I will try to develop and do some research on. So if you have any pointers as to how to get some more um, air bubbles or some bigger air bubbles throughout my loaf, please leave them in the comments below. Of course, I had to try them with some Vegemite and butter and I am obsessed.